With Michigan's sweep of this week's action, the Wolverines winning over Purdue at home and a road kill in Champaign-Urbana against the Illini, Michigan should be a number one ranked team in the country. If so, they will have earned it. 19-1 on the year, 6-1 in Big Ten play. Hi everyone, I'm Matt Shepard. Welcome to another edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. There are certain places in the Big Ten that are really hard to win for road clubs. Assembly Hall in Champaign-Urbana is one of those places. The students are right on top of you. They get loud and usually the Illini use it to their advantage. Didn't matter Sunday though against the Wolverines. Michigan seeking a second consecutive win over Illinois in Champaign-Urbana, and they delivered a stern message early on with Glenn Robinson on the offensive glass. Rebound tapped up, no. Second try, yes, by Robinson. Nick Stauskas and Trey Burke combined for 18 first-half points, each hitting huge threes. Burke will try and counter, and does a straightaway three ball. Trey Burke pushes Michigan's lead back to six. U of M led by eight at the break. They commanded the floor from the start of the second half as well. Beating up Illinois inside with Jordan Morgan out with an ankle injury, the Wolverines asked for the next man up, and they all delivered. Mitch McGarry, short, rebound McGarry, put back, good. John Horford, still cutting Skoska's pop, pass Horford, reverse layup, good. What a move. And Max Bielfeld. Loose ball picked up by Bielfeld, put it back up and in. And the leaders of this club continued to shine. Trey Burke and Tim Hardaway with big-time shots in big-time situations. Michigan wins it by 14 and extends their series winning streak over the Illini to four in a row. You don't win anything for being first place during the season. Uh, you know, we really, if we focused on that, it wouldn't be a big deal, but we just don't. You know, we, uh, we just, you know, try to, try to be Big Ten champions and just work as hard as we can. We're improving every day, you know, every day in practice. We're coming with the right mindset. You know, we're not going to look at this number one ranking or anything. Um, that's more for the fans and everybody who's out there. You know, so it's exciting for the, for the school to be there again. Um, but, but that doesn't mean anything to us. we got to come out ready to play every, every game. Well, the last time Michigan won back-to-back -back games in Champaign-Urbana, Travis Conlon was the point guard. <laughs> how, about, how about that? Your club, very impressive on I, Sunday night. I guess you have to have really good point guards to win here because if Travis and Trey Burke can do it, it's pretty good. No, it, it's good. It's a great road win against a very good team, a team that will, will compete uh, for an NCAA tournament bid, a team that will probably be a top-50 team when it's, all, when it's all said and done. So uh, a good win. You get these on the road and really under some adversity with Jordan Morgan being injured early. One of your phrases is next man up. Not only did you have Mitch McGarry step up, but John Horford and Max Bielfeld, too. Yeah, I'm so proud of both of those. They've had different adversity. One adversity is John's been injured so much. I mean, he really hasn't had any volume of play in practice or game for almost two years. He, he just, he, just when he gets going, something happens. And then the, the, uh, Max Bielfeld to come in, have an air ball the first time up. The crowd's chanting at him, traitor, traitor, because, you know, his dad has been very connected. And then have him bury two more and then get a big basket. I mean, that's really, really special. That's what, that's what we coach for, Matt. Can you talk to me about your defense? Because it seems to me that this team's identity is slowly becoming more of a defensive club than it has been an offensive team. Here, here's the thing with defense, is you need repetition, repetition. There's so many different looks you see. We will play a completely different uh, style and defense when we play against Northwestern in uh, just, uh, you know, 72 hours. And you got to keep adjusting. All right, now let's take that statement and put six freshmen into it, right? And a sophomore. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, there's a lot of things that need another thing. And they need volumes and volumes of work to get it all. Uh, and so I thought we did a great job today holding them under 60 points. You know, a, a lot of people asked you after the game about the number one ranking. I think it's great that your kids were asked about that, and they basically said, look, it really doesn't matter right now. What matters is at the end. We want to be Big Ten champs. We want to be number one when all everybody else has fallen. Yeah, that's the thing. Win the Big Ten championship. That's always been a focus of Michigan basketball, of Mich at Michigan everything. And then with that, if you have the right focus then, you can compete for the biggest prize of all. But for right now, keep keep. We we just we're dreaming of that. That's our focus right now, and uh, what I, I'm happy for our fans. They they all, you know, if they, if 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 someday we are number one, in the early season in the in the January or February, that's good. But it's really in April. It was really where we finish in March in the Big Ten, mm -hmm. and then what happens in March and April. Uh, that that's really what we're shooting for. Congratulations on the win. All right, thanks, Pat. The week started out on the right foot. On Thursday, the Wolverines hosted Purdue, who had won three of their last four at Chrysler Center. John Beeline's club used a strong second half. How did they do it? Stick around and find out. 
Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by the University of Michigan Health System. Visit us at uofmhealth.org. And by Absol Pure Water, Michigan's favorite spring water and official bottled water of the Michigan Wolverines. Go to absolpure.com. We have done nothing yet. We are hunting championships. That's what we're doing. We are hunters from the very beginning. And if you're hunting championships, you gotta hunt every game. And that's what hunters have to do. And I, I, get, I go crazy. I go crazy when anybody would think that any of our teams, any of my guys, or any of the buddies that coached by all of you is gonna go into a game and think, right, that we're not hunting. We'll always got the chip on our shoulders, don't we? We always have that. No retreats. We learn a tough, hard lesson in Columbus, all right? And that is, when the ball goes up, we are down 10 zip. We have got to land the first punch every time we take the court. You with me on that, Trey? Yes, so we don't have any retreats, all right? Gee, there's stuff we don't allow in this house. They are in our house tonight. Your job to, is to let them know the house rules. You got 40 minutes, of, a window of opportunity to explain to them how we do things in our house and what's allowed and what's not. Okay, J-Mo, we on with that, you got toughness. Let them know tonight, Michael, what the house rules are in Chrysler. Yeah. Everybody take a look at that, can you see it? Those are the Big Ten standards. And I got a question for you, I got, I got one question and you get to choose which one you believe that you are. Contenders or pretenders, Nick? And here's the thing, Coach, I mean, the train that we operate on is called the Wolverine Express, okay? Our engines are strong, everything we need is there. We're going to places that only other people can only imagine of going. We don't need a Boilermaker, do we? Here we go, Coach. Yeah! Purdue came into Chrysler Center on a three-game winning streak, and the Boilermakers had won three of their past four in Ann Arbor. They started strong again on Thursday night, led by D.J. Bird's 11 first-half points that included three triples. A deep three by Bird. Oh, my goodness. That's from way downtown, and it drops through, and he's starting to feel it. The visitors were able to build a seven-point lead before Trey Burke and Tim Hardaway steered the Wolverines in the right direction. The Gary hands to Burke, hesitates. Now a fadeaway from the left baseline. Money. That's an NBA pro-type shot. Between the rings, Arana Horford screen jumps into a triple try. Got it. Tim Hardaway from the top of the key. But Purdue led by one at the break. The second half, though, was a complete role reversal. U of M used a 14-2 run to stun the Boilermakers, and they dialed long distance to do it. Burke around a Morgan screen, weaves his way, right side bounce pass for Robinson. Found an open Hardaway from the corner. Bring it up! Weaves his way, finds an open Robinson for three. Book it! 49-40, Michigan with their largest lead. And they got a big boost from the energy of Mitch McGarry. Off the inbound bird with an air ball. Grabbed by Hardaway. Right side, McGarry runs the floor, jams it down. The Wolverines put four in double figures, shot 54% of the second half, and won another game by double digits, this time by 15 to stay unbeaten at home in 12 tries. So the Wolverines were down at the break for just the third time this year. Obviously made adjustments in the second half. A lot of people will say, it's because your team was off a week that you started slowly. Would you agree with no, that? No, I've never, you know, I think if you're off for two or three weeks, it's a difference. We got rest. We got better during that time. Purdue is good. I think anybody that thinks Purdue is in a down year right now, are they in a rebuilding year? Yes. Are they going to be good? Yes. And they came out knocking in shots, really playing good defense on us. Uh, we weren't as poised as we needed to be, but it wasn't because of the weak rest. Speaking of knocking down shots, D.J. Bird had 11 points in the opening half. He ended the game with 11 points. What'd you do differently on him? Well, we just, uh, we had to tell him with a lot of young guys, especially our freshmen, that this young man is a gunner, uh, and I mean that in a positive way, and he can shoot it so quickly that you've got to stay attached to him. And he did a couple of things that, that he, first of all, he banked one in, but the other ones, he got it off with a sleeper, where Nick says he's not going to shoot it from that far. Yes, he is, Nick. And so we got, and so we, we just changed some assignments. 
Uh, we switched different people on to him, tried to keep them fresh. They did a great job. Going into the game, Purdue was the second best offensive rebounding team in the Big Ten at 13.6 per game. You won that battle of the glass overall and on the offense. Yeah, it, do it? they really, well, you know what? They're, they're not, they're huge in the center. They're not big at the power forwards. So they're as quick as we are. And we, we had to match that. Now, they got some rebounds in the first half that were long rebounds. Matt, you know, it, inside position isn't always the best position. And they, they out, well, they probably outscrapped us, but some of them we couldn't have gotten. Uh, but at the same time, we just worked through it and worked through it. And second half, uh, the rebounds came our way, and, and we, I'm sure we checked out much better. Two guys were really close to a double-double. Glenn Robinson, one rebound shy. Trey Burke, a couple of assists shy. But Mitch McGarry gave you that energy that you and I talk about almost on a weekly basis that really energized the crowd. Yeah, Mitch has really helped us so many ways. He, get, he does these intangible things out there that only Mitch can do. Uh, so he, the extra possessions that he gets, the charges that he takes, the different things he does really help us. And they, they fire everybody up. He the National Weather Service has issued... Coffee with the Coach, presented by Tim Hortons. And Eric from Livonia asks, does it affect your conversations or coaching when TV crews have you wired for sound? <laughs> it's a good question Yeah, it is a good question. I mean, I have to be somewhat guarded, but I basically am the same. Whether it's a, you know, you, ha you, ha you have to trust them sometimes that if you do slip and you say something derogatory about a particular w player, the way he's playing, or you know, the other players or whatever, you, you got to trust them that they're going to edit that. Uh, but we know when it's live as well. And uh, I think I'm the, I hope that I'm almost the same person that the, you see in, in those clips that it is in reality. Do coaches ever worry about giving away any secrets? I mean, you're you know, some defenses or things like that. You know, that. it was interesting. After one of our games, they were showing me in front of the board and somebody had, had T-voted it slowed it down, stopped it, take a picture with their phone of what our board looked like, and then called me with questions. And I'd never think of that. So there's, uh, with the way on TV, people can really slow it down and look at things. So uh, I'm conscious of it. Let's see how it works. All right, when we come back, could the women extend their winning streak to 11 straight? It was a first-place Big Ten showdown against the Nittany Lions in Ann Arbor. That story more after this. Michigan basketball. I'm Sarah Van Meter. Michigan had its 10 game win streak snapped last Monday in a battle of first place teams at Chrysler Center. Penn State went on an early 15 0 run to take a comfortable lead, but the Wolverines clawed back and trailed by just eight points at intermission. Michigan scored the first eight points of the second half, and they took a 35 34 lead on a three pointer by Kate Thompson. Penn State's defense then took over, holding Michigan scoreless for six minutes, and the Lions used a late 12-0 run to seal a 10-point victory. Michigan was led by Rachel Sheffer, who scored 20 points and became the 23rd Wolverine in program history to surpass the 1,000 career point mark. Michigan bounced back nicely three nights later in Bloomington against the Hoosiers. Four Wolverines scored in double figures, with Sheffer leading the way with 19 points. Nia Jordan scored 10 points and grabbed 11 rebounds, helping the Wolverines take a nine-point lead at the break. Michigan's lead stretched to 24 points at the midway point of the second half, with Kate Thompson scoring 13 points and Jenny Ryan adding 10. 61-43, the final from Assembly Hall. Sunday, the Wolverines returned to Chrysler Center to face Iowa, a team they beat earlier in this season on the road. Senior Jenny Ryan had a career scoring day and keyed Michigan's 11-0 run late in the half, but the Hawkeyes responded with a run of their own to cut Michigan's lead to just two points at the break. Michigan scored the first seven points of the second half, but couldn't pull away. Iowa fought back with an 11-2 run to take the lead. 
Iowa's Bethany Doolittle won on an 8-0 personal run of her own and ended up with a career-high 19 points as the Hawkeyes pulled ahead. Ryan led Michigan with a career-high 20 points, but the Wolverines scored just one field goal in the final seven minutes and lose to Iowa 63-57. The Wolverines drop to 5-2 and two in Big Ten play. Michigan hits the road next, traveling to Minnesota on Thursday for next Monday's big showdown in East Lansing against the Spartans. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Sarah Van Meter. When we come back, a long-standing tradition here at Michigan continues. John Beeline's wife Kathleen and his daughter Shauna organize a recent trip to Mott Children's Hospital. The story after this. We were fortunate to be contacted through the Family Center. In the fall, the football team joined. Um, working with Anna Minery came through, and they had a great success with the football team. Coming in, working, um, meeting the patients, meeting the families, and they asked us if we could join in the fun, and we were able to make it all work. Coach is recruiting, and I am here just stepping in, but really don't have to step in as much. The players, uh, they, uh, they know what they're doing, and they do it well. My name is Tim Hardaway, Jr. I'm a junior from Miami, Florida, I'm studying sociology, and my favorite food is Taco Bell. Taco Bell, then. <laughs> Taco Bell. I think this is what it's all about, is being able to give back, and we're on a, a platform where we actually mean something to people, so to be able to go do something like this, uh, it all puts everything in perspective. You know, basketball is so important to so many people, but when you come here and, and see these kids, it shows you what really is important, and uh, it's a good thing for us to do whenever we can. I got uh, four nieces and nephews, so um, I've been an uncle since I was 11, so uh, I've had uh, younger uh, kids and my parents have had grandkids all around the house so I'm used to it and uh, I love kids no matter what. I think it also is so important for these patients to see the players in real life. They see them on television, they see them on the internet, but it's nice to see them every day. But they're real guys living life just like they are so it was nice to make the connection with the patients. Well, I remember our, our own kids looking up to a lot of our players um, when they were young and it means a lot. They're an inspiration and they're, they're heroes. So I am so proud of these guys that they were able to come and they wanted to be here. Boy, it's so great that your wife, your entire family really is involved in Mott Children's Hospital. I know community service is so important to you and your staff and your players, too. Yeah, you know what, and we wish we could do more. And we said as one of our goals uh, this year to try to increase it so much more. Uh, these guys are, are going so busy, and our class schedule uh, makes it so that we, we basically, you know, we're with them until 7 or 8 o'clock at night, many nights, mm -hmm. because we like to do the study hall in the afternoon, so we miss some opportunities. This was one that my daughter, Shauna, found, my wife helped with, that really uh, fit in perfectly for what we want to do. So between that, my charity, the St. Louis Center, we're trying to, the, these uh, appreciation and, uh, and gratitude that we have for who we are, it really comes forward in these kids when they have these opportunities. Why do you think it's so important for your daughter, and your wife and, and your, your entire family to get involved in, in Mott Children's Hospital? Well, I think it's, it's very important because of, it, we're right here in town. And, you know, I, you know, I come from a huge family, Absolutely. a huge family. Nine and, kids, and, right? Not nine kids, 44 grandkids, and now it's over 100 <laughs> overall, counting great-grandkids. And along the line, uh, there's been some, some issues with different children that, uh, f thank God, uh, most uh, our children have had really healthy lives, but we've had a, a few things that we had to fight through when they were little, and having a good hospital in your neighborhood is absolutely incredible, right around the corner. So, we were, Kathleen and I will support it as, as long as we're here in any way we can. Your Captain Josh Barlstein filled in for you during the radio show this week, and he said, it's amazing how you can feel when you think you've had a bad day, and then you show up at my children's hospital, and you see the kids the first time all week, they smile because they're meeting you. It really puts things in perspective, doesn't it, Coach? Yeah, it's, it's terrific stuff for our guys. Like, and I think this is a cliche, but we get more out of it probably than people would ever think. And you, you think you're giving, uh, but you're actually getting. Good role models. Thanks for your time. Thank we you. appreciate it. Glad you could join us for this week's edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. We invite you back next week. The Wolverines go for the season series sweep of Northwestern, and it's the showdown everybody has been waiting for. The Wolverines and the Hoosiers from Bloomington. The recap next week on Inside Michigan Basketball. We'll see you then. And go Blue. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by the University of Michigan Health System. Visit us at uofmhealth.org. And by Absol Pure Water. 
Michigan's favorite spring water, and official bottled water of the Michigan Wolverines. Go to absopure.com.